There's a growing popularity for fantasy role-playing games. Sure, yes, you, we'll you get a very anything. strong sense of evil oh coming he from back straight away. <laughs> coming from this direction over here, running in a line down that way. Uh, we'll my cleric, bring, bring me up. The cleric. Okay. He might be handy against the evil. Right. Three of the players around the table have taken on roles of cleric, wizard, and fighting dwarf. They face dangers in a dungeon of many chambers with monsters and perils created and manipulated by the dungeon master. That one slumps to the ground. Right. And it's still your initiative, so are there any. Yeah, other I'll, my cleric will come forward with his holy symbol in his hand and command them, in the name of all that's good and just, to return and repent their evil ways. Okay, roll two six hundred dice. Twelve. Yes, they all fall back. All those figures retreat and seem to be drawing away from your holy symbol. And they, they go back to, against the wall. There's a boom today in these role-playing fantasy games. It's called the Sword and Sorcery Cult. People are turning themselves into wizards and demons, knights and clerics, and a bewildering variety of mythical figures, and going through medieval adventures equipped with magical powers. Every game needs a dungeon master who must draw up a dungeon, much as, as the one there. And they populate it, they have ideas, Im imagination, and it's a, it's a game in which you just sort of bring together all bits of ideas and imaginations that you've got from books. And where do you get the monsters from? Ones. Uh, well, a lot of monsters are detailed in the rule book, but uh, people tend to make up their own ones to suit their own situations and, and what they want to get from the game. You actually become the character you're playing. Instead of um, saying that the character does so-and-so, you actually say, I, and mean it. I go to the door, I listen at the door. And when you are in extreme danger, you feel it and you get scared. And the, the main appeal of the game, really, is that it's so sort of so much like living in a real fantasy world. Um, it's the nearest thing you can possibly get. Like reading a novel is something like Dungeons and Dragons, but you've still got, it's only a book. It's, only, it's still only a piece of paper in front of you, whereas this is a lot more realistic. What and you can actually die, you personally can actually die in this game. It can release some of your inattention. It, you know, it um, releases some of the bottled up passions you have inside you, um, some of the hatred everyone, all of us have inside us makes it easier to live, easier to get on with people, because you get rid of your frustrations that way. Instead of going out on the streets and um, hassling someone, you do it in the game, and no one gets hurt. Well, I think everybody likes to, uh, to have an adventurous side to them, to ride around the countryside writing wrongs and uh, generally living it up. And um, it's got much the same appeal as the myths and all the, uh, the other legends. The, it's just got that romantic appeal that you can ride free and, and be a hero.